Deuteronomy 22, verse number 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. It doesn't say the clothes are the abomination. It says the person is the abomination. It doesn't say the clothes are the abomination. It says the person is. Are you saying that my wife is an abomination when she wears pants and jeans? Yes, that's correct. She is an abomination. That's correct. Because if I wore a dress or a skirt, I would be an abomination to God. And any woman that wears pants, jeans, or cutoffs, or whatever they are, I don't care. I don't care if you've ever never heard this before or not. I don't care if you change your opinion on this. I don't care if your wife changed her opinion, your daughters changed their opinion, your granddaughters changed their opinion. I don't care if Pastor so and so changed her opinion. It don't matter to me. God said they're an abomination. And for 5,900 years, listen to me good, for 5,900 years, 99% of all women saved and lost were wearing skirts and dresses, long dresses and long skirts. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. The Bible says, in like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Hey, you want to go to the Greek? Why don't you read the Greek word for modest apparel? And read that it says, all the way down, it's like a gown, all the way down. That's the Greek word, John MacArthur. Yeah. But they don't want to go to the Greek on the verses that bother them. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the way down. That's what modest apparel is. Well, you can get that from other verses in the Bible too. Not just 1 Timothy chapter number 2. Now, I, I can't, look, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I feel very fortunate because my wife, man, most men don't have wives like I, ha like I have. I, I, they don't have a wife like I have. They just don't. And I feel bad for them because you can't force your wife. What are you going to do? Beat her? Yeah, maybe you should. But it's going to come out and tape. Don't worry. I don't, I'm not going to regret anything I said tonight. You can beat her, but, you know, if you want to do it willingly, so you can't force her to do it. And you've got to pray for her. You know, there's some men that, you know, you gotta, there's nothing they can do. Some people got saved later on in life, and their daughters... Are too old now. You're, gonna, you're not going to take a, take a, tell an 18, 25 year old woman that doesn't love God to uh, get rid of her pants and jeans and put a dress and skirt on. But you go to these churches, man. I'll tell you what, Amen. they're so good on some things, but then you see these women coming in with with jeans and and pants on. When I, when I see a woman coming in the church with the jeans or pants, yeah, I either say either she's a first time visitor, she's just got saved, or she's a rebel, a rebel. Or the pastor's afraid to preach the truth because they don't want to offend the women. They don't want to hurt the women's feelings. We got married. Look, the only question I asked my wife before, you know why I got married? My wife? Because my mom advised me and said, well, how about Irene? It's okay. She's Greek. That's for tomorrow night. That's for tomorrow night. The separation of the races, you know, that's for tomorrow night. She said, how about Irene? So I said, Irene, or we went out, whatever. And we didn't do it all right, be honest with you. Uh, not that we did anything, uh, you know, don't, don't let your mind wander, okay? So, uh, but the one, I only asked her one question. I said, are you willing to obey everything I, I, I tell you to do? She said, yes. I said, let's get married. Now, thank God she was honest and thank, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I've been very fortunate and blessed, be honest with you. Most men, I feel bad for them because they have a whirlwind behind them. They have a Jezebel that they marry. Don't blame me because you married a Jezebel. And don't blame me that you married a Nabal who, who is obstinate. And don't blame me because you married the wrong person. I'm just, don't, look, and I'm not even getting to tattoos. Should we stop preaching on tattoos because one third of our people have tattoos? Well, at least the people with the tattoos ought to say, Pastor, you're right, I should have never gotten these tattoos. Keep preaching on it. Don't you think that's an honest position? Don't you think, uh, should I stop preaching on alcohol because we have people that are dying of cirrhosis of the liver and that reminds them of a past life of living in alcohol? No, there's other people that need to hear, stay away from alcohol. It's a sin. It's, it's evil. It's going to kill you. Well, we don't stop preaching on alcohol and tattoos. Maybe they do now. That's not part of the sermon. Well, I'm not going to preach, I'm not going to stop preaching on these things because somebody either doesn't agree 
has never heard this or doesn't know the truth of this. And by the way, that's why most women are too re rebellious. When you put a pair of pants on or jeans on, you act like a man. You talk like a man. You walk like a man. And you think you're the boss. You think you're... Let's get getting to my other point here. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Did I tell you not to come? I thought I made myself perfectly clear last, yesterday not to come. Did I told you? Isaiah 47. See, they say they believe the Bible. They don't believe the Bible. You cut out with a pen knife the words that you don't like and throw it in the fire. That's not for today, Pastor. We're in a different dispensation. You know, people in the old dispensation, they're like human beings like the new dispensation. Yeah. I know there's different dispensations. I understand that. I'm not against dispensations. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47, verse number one. Oh, here he goes again. Yeah, here he goes again. Here he goes again. Come down, verse number one. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks. Now that's not a master lock that you buy at the hardware store. Okay? You know what locks are? They're hair. Like Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Unco God says to do this. Watch this. Uncover thy locks, make bare the leg. Now, if you skip science and biology class like I did to play poker when I was in public school, get yourself a dictionary out or get a, get a biology book and you'll find out that a leg consists from the hip all the way down to the foot. Let me repeat that. An unsaved writer on the dictionary in the panel, the committee there, put in the definition of the leg somebody, something from the hip all the way down to the foot. That's the definition in any biology book. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. The thigh, again, from the hip here, down to the knee. You know what God says? Uncover it. God said, go ahead and uncover it. Pass over the rivers. Here's what God calls all of that. Thy nakedness. Well, that's not how I see it, Pastor. I, I, when we were a street preacher on a Saturday, a Jehovah's Witness couple came up to me and said, that's not how I see it. I don't see it that way. Do you ever talk to a Mormon? And you can't get, but that's what it says. I said, Isaiah 9, 6 says that he's God, that he's almighty God, that he's mighty, the mighty God, it says, the everlasting father. I was telling these people, I don't see it that way. You try telling an independent fundamental Baptist, any of these things I'm preaching, well, I don't see it that way. My alma mater never taught that. My hero never said that. And so thus, I'm going to stay stunted and retarded in my spiritual growth instead of believing the words of almighty God. You wonder why God's cursed America? You may not like this. And why God's blessing the Arab Muslims over there? If I was a woman, I'd be embarrassed seeing a Muslim go into Walmart in the middle of July and August, dress head to toe with a head covering, while you go in there with your bikini and your bathing suit and your, your sandals and your thighs showing. I'd be embarrassed if I was a woman. And by the way, that's why God is blessing men more than women today. You know why? Because like I'm dressed today, most men dress properly when they go to work, a meeting, or church. Because you're covering your body. Most women, they don't. They're dressed like a bunch of harlots and whores. Yeah. The harlots and whores 50 years ago dressed better than God's women are today. The, the street walkers 50, 60 years ago dressed better than God's so-called people today showing everything to the world. So I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's not my fault. Not my fault. Uncover the locks. You don't have to have a head covering. And by the way, this is all the time in public. I said all the time in public. Uncover the locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. God said, go ahead. Go ahead. 
You want to drink alcohol? Go ahead. I'll curse you. You want to disobey the very words of God? I'll curse you, your marriage, your children, your church, your life, your health, your fire. I'll curse you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Which of the words don't you like? And take that pen knife and just cut them out. IBF. Independent Fundamental Baptist. You just think you're a Baptist because, what, you were born a Baptist into a Baptist family and, and you grew up a Baptist, so that makes you a Baptist. You don't even know what a Baptist is. I'm going to show you at the end. You don't know what Baptists believe. You, you have been conditioned and taught to believe in a box what you're supposed to believe. Not the words of God because, you know, I never learned that in, in, in theology class. You know? My dead professor over there, Professor Big Bottom, he never taught me that. 